city as a, someone who's promoted and fought for publicly funded legal services throughout his life. Um, if legal aid is 64 years old, Robert is in fact 64 years young. Uh, I'll pass over to Robert. Yeah, I share a birthday with Legal Aid. I'm very proud to share it. We're refighting old battles, aren't we? Because uh, people fought to get Legal Aid in the first place in a very similar situation to the, uh, what is described as the austerity period we're going through now. But that was real austerity in the 40s. It was a time when people fought to set up the welfare state. They, did, they didn't cut. They actually created the National Health Service. And Legal Aid is part of that welfare state. So we're at the same time fighting that old battle, but we also, as the, as the people who've organized this demonstration, and, and you know, fantastically well done to everybody concerned in doing that, but we're also here to celebrate legal aid. So I just wanted to speak in a minute about one person. I think we've probably all got stories as, uh, as lawyers uh, about an, an individual we remember particularly who we fought a case with and who's been inspirational. So I want to talk about that in a moment. But I, I, I know we can all tell that story. I know that amongst the people here, there, there will be lawyers who... And we, I don't think we are fat cats in legal aid. We have to work very hard. We're lean and hungry. But it's not just about our jobs. It's about justice. And that is the heart and the core of all this. You cannot have a fair system of justice unless it is open to all. And that's the core idea which we're here to placing um, at risk a, a whole range of vulnerable people who will be at the mercy of the system as it stands. They'll be in the hands of the police and state organisations and we will see a far greater series of miscarriages of justice. We, we saw the Birmingham Six, the Guildford Four, the Cardiff Three. We saw from this city Robert Brown who campaigned for many years to establish his innocence. And what will happen is if these cuts do go through, the more and more of those cases will arise. That's that's what we're fighting against. But let's remember what we're fighting for. I just want to pick up, we can all we can all think of cases. I know that there are, there are people here who worked in, in the area of housing law, of immigration, um, in, in the area uh, of family law, and, and a, a, a campaign for people to get their legal rights there. But I want to just talk about one person sticks out in my mind. Uh, her name is Sylvia O'Reilly and um, she had a brother called Sonny, Sonny Lodge, and he got in a, a bit of trouble, nothing very serious, but he did get a short prison sentence and he was in Strange Ways Prison. And uh, he was complaining to, to Sylvia and his family that he was being bullied and victimized by, by prison officers. And they, the family repeatedly complained to the prison about this and asked them to protect him. Instead of protecting him, he was placed in a cell on his own. And late one night, uh, at Sylvia's door, there was a, she got up, and at the door was a priest and a policeman. Uh, and they came to tell her that he had hanged himself. Uh, so we can all imagine how to lose a brother, but to lose a, a brother in those circumstances must have been totally devastating. Um, what Sylvia did was, and this was with the help of the legal aid, had to fight all the way through at the inquest. The prison authorities were holding back key information which was necessary to show what had happened. The jury was so outraged by the charade of that, of that proceeding that so one, one of them refused to sign the jury uh, inquest, the verdict, the, and the others marched out and spoke to the press. Um, we, Bought uh, a judicial review of Pete Weatherby was, was, was heavily involved and, and led that all the way through. And eventually we got a public inquiry. I'm going to bring this to a close, but what happened in the public inquiry was that Sylvia and her family were vindicated. The inquiry came to the conclusion that the, the prison had failed to protect Sonny Lodge, a vulnerable young man who was placed in their care. They'd ignored all the warnings. Uh, and, there were, uh, and what the family achieved, obviously, no, nothing was ever going to bring him back. 
but they felt that by campaigning uh, and fighting with the help of legal aid, that they had established the truth, they had made it a bit less likely that in the future any other family would go through a series of agonies that they had gone through. And, and uh, as this campaign went on, uh, I was more and more impressed by the power and the strength of, of Sylvia. She, she, she said to me at the end that she, she, during what, what she'd gone through, she felt she'd actually grown in a huge number in a really key way and I think a lot of people who go through the, through the legal system they go into it they don't know anything about it at all uh, and it's intimidating but at the end of it if, if you've got the, the help and the backing of, uh, she had of course a family around her but she also had the, the help of legal aid with, with that support she was able to, to carry on and to achieve justice so that's the key word that's what we're fighting for today and uh, it's, it's a fantastic turnout Congratulations to everybody.